so we have seen the muscles of the face then neck then the thoracic cavity then abdominal cavity then at the back the muscles of the back area the muscles of the upper limb muscles of the lower limb muscles of the pelvic girdle and these all are muscles that have been seen in the in lecture now we will see the applied anatomy of the muscles in that the disease condition which is related to muscles okay so let us see in one by one so first condition or first abnormality of the muscles that is known as a myasthenia gravis okay myasthenia gravis so myasthenia gravis that is represented as a mg okay in clinic you have seen uh, like this way mg written by a doctor then you have to understand this is a myasthenia gravis okay so it's a long term neuromuscular disease okay it's a neuromuscular disease that connected by a two muscles that connected by a two system that is neuro and the muscular so both are affected these both system are affected in the myasthenia gravis so this is a neuromuscular disease that leads to the varying degree of the skeletal muscle weakness okay there is a skeletal muscle weakness are there and the because of the skeletal muscle weakness there is a neuromuscular problems arises and this condition is known as a neuromyasthenia gravis the most commonly affected muscles are those in the myasthenia gravis that is a eye face and the during the swallowing okay into the swallowing into the esophagus okay so these are the structure or the organ so associated that organ there is a muscles are there and these muscles are become weaker so because of that this is called as a myasthenia gravis okay so let us see the symptoms of the myasthenia gravis in that the double vision okay blur vision double vision like this way see this is the picture of the double vision okay because why there is a musculoskeletal muscle weakness of the eye okay because eye is the affected okay affected so that's why there is a blur vision or double vision then drooping of the eyelid why because of the because of the weakness of the muscles related to the eye so that why that's why see this is a drooping of the eye drooping eye okay like this way see this is a figure of the drooping eye because the eye muscles are become weaken so that's why drooping of the eye is there then trouble in in talking and trouble troubling walking why because the muscles related to the swallowing muscles related to the face are become weaken so that's why person cannot able to speak so that's why person having a difficulty in speaking so there is a weaken muscles or the muscles which is affected related to the swallowing and related to the face then trouble in walking because of the whole muscle weakness into the body so that's why the person cannot maintain her gait and they cannot walk properly okay so these are the symptoms into the myasthenia gravis so what is myasthenia gravis it's a long term it's a long term okay it's not short term it's a long term neuromuscular disease in that the skeletal muscle weakness occur at the variety level okay now second one that is a muscular dystrophy okay see this is the second uh, disease condition or abnormality of the muscles seen into the patient that is a muscular dystrophy so in this group of the in inherited disease there is a progressive degeneration of the group of muscles okay it's a hereditary disease mostly it will be seen into the inherited cases okay from for uh, from a uh, grandfather to its off offspring okay so it will be heri it's a heritated disease or inherited disease so mostly seen into the hereditary okay what is a main abnormality in the muscular dystrophy see this is the normal muscle and see this is the muscular dystrophy you can see so in the dystrophy there is a progressive degeneration of the group of muscle see this is a both muscle okay both both 
both are or we can say in a group muscle okay group of the muscles become degenerated so there will be known as a muscular dystrophy okay so group of the genetic disease that can cause a progressive weakness and the loss of the muscle mass the loss of the muscle mass loss of the muscle weakness or uh, loss of the muscles or uh, it's a progressive we uh, progressive weakness of the muscle so that is known as a muscular dystrophy okay the muscles become very weak and very shrunken so that is known as the muscular dystrophy mostly seen into the genetic cases as well as the into the hereditary now next one that is the rotator cuff injury okay rotator cuff injury you can see this is a normal patient and see this is the patient having a rotator cuff problem okay so rotator cuff muscles stabilize and strengthen the shoulder joint okay so these muscles are helpful for the stabilization as well as the strengthen the shoulder joint okay shoulder joint are strengthened by the by the muscles and injury here is common here here injury is very common because it's a shoulder joint so we are lifting a weight we are doing uh, any uh, muscular activity so by that time the shoulder injury becomes very common so during the injury to the shoulder joint this rotator cuff injury will be there so it's a very common injury leading to the pain and restricted mobility of the shoulder okay mostly there will be which which is a major sign that is a pain into the shoulder area while moving the shoulder joint as well as the restricted the mobility of the shoulder we cannot move our shoulder like this way okay so there will be restriction of the mobility restriction of the movement of the shoulder joint so healing can take months even the years because it's a muscular injury it's a muscle injury so that's why healing can be very poor it might be into the month it might be into the years okay so there is no any limits of a uh, healing okay so this is a rotator cuff injury so injury to the shoulder joint that is known as a rotator cuff injury so this is the end of the muscular de muscular system in that we have seen the anatomy and physiology of the muscular system then what is muscles and which are the muscles of the body human body and which are the abnormalities of the muscles thank you